Have you ever transferred data into Excel and then see that there are a bunch of blank rows? This is a common data cleaning problem and there are actually many solutions, but I found the top three. Because your data is unique, I won't make any assumptions. Instead, I'll guide you through each method, exploring the weaknesses and strengths of each. Then you can choose the method that best suits your needs. Hi, I'm Rebecca and I teach Excel users how to create spreadsheets they can be proud of. If you use Excel in any capacity, you're in the right place. Whatever kind of spreadsheet you have, I'm sure it could use a little updating. That's why I created the Spreadsheet Tune-Up, a free training just for you. In five short videos, I'll teach you the first steps that you need to optimize any spreadsheet. This is our source data, and as you can see, there are a whole bunch of blank rows. The first thing I want to do is, as always, create an Excel table. The problem is, when you have blank rows, it can be really hard to actually make the table, because when you use the keyboard shortcut Control a it only selects the first group of continuous rows. So you really need to be able to go all the way to the bottom and select all of it. I'm going to give you the fastest way to do that, which is to use the keyboard shortcut control and then the arrow keys. So first I'm going to use control down to get to the bottom of the entire workbook. I can, as you can see, there's nothing down here. It's like millions, <laughs> millions of rows, but then you're going to go to the right until you get to the first um, the first column where there is actually data and then use the keyboard shortcut control up. Now you are at the bottom of the workbook, uh, the bottom of the actual used range and you can see that it's in row 4254. Remember that and now let's go back to our data. Oh, I used control up to get up here. <laughs> Control up arrow. That's a, like the fastest way to get around in Excel. Four two five four. So then we're gonna actually use the keyboard shortcut Control T to make the table. And here is where we're gonna change the last number, four two five four, to that last row. Oh, and then um, I'm gonna do it again so I can get to the bottom you can see that the table goes all the way down and you can tell because obviously the formatting has changed and there's also this little um, handle down here, this little dark darkened corner. So now we have our entire table is for our entire data is formatted as a table, which is super important. The first method that we'll go over is probably the one that you've seen on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube shorts, and that's because it's pretty fast. It's called go to special. So the first thing that you need to do is use the keyboard shortcut control A to select the entire table, then go to the home tab all the way over to this find and select button, and then click go to special. There is a keyboard shortcut for this, but I don't know it because uh, I only use the most common keyboard shortcuts. I just don't do this that often. Anyway, so you select blanks and then click OK. And now Excel is going to change what's selected to only the blank cells within that selection that I had, which was this entire table. Now, this method only works if the only blanks you have are entirely blank rows. So as you can see here, I have these three highlighted cells that are also blank. And I'll show you why this doesn't work. So you can right click and then go to delete table rows. And what happened is it deleted those three cells. It deleted the entire rows for the, where those three cells were blank. So that is not what we want. So I just went back. Um, so what, what you can see here is that the only way that the go to special method works is if you have only entirely blank rows or you can do, you can do something else. Instead of selecting the entire table, you need to choose a column that you think is going to be populated the most out of all the other rows. So for this table, it's probably the most important column. So for this table, since we're talking about schools, the school name is I'm going to choose as the most important column. If, if this is blank, then I don't want the, the row at all. So I'm going to select the school name column, then go to the same, the same steps, go to special blanks. Okay. And now it has only selected these rows. 
that are blank in the school name column. So we're not looking at whether it's entirely blank, we're just looking at whether the school name column is blank. And then we can right click and delete. And you can see that it actually did delete all of those blanks except not these ones that have other random blank cells. So it deleted the blank rows for the entire. But what if you really want to delete only the columns that are entirely blank? Let's talk about that. I would use a formula. So I'm going to add, I added another column called helper and we're going to use a very simple formula. It's called count a, which counts the number of, of uh, cells in a range that are not empty. And then the arguments is just going to be this entire row from this cell to that cell. And you can see that since we have, this is an Excel table, it automatically put this into structured references, which references the table name and the column names, which is pretty nice. Close it. And then also since this is an Excel table, it copied that formula entirely down. Now you can see anytime there is a blank cell, the number here is going to be lower than when they're entirely filled in. So this is the number of non-blank cells. So if the, if, if the row is entirely filled in, it's going to be seven here. Obviously that's going to be different for your table because you have a different number of columns, but you can also see that when it's entirely blank, the helper column is zero. Now let me just show you what happens if you add a space here. Now it's no longer zero because a space means that it's not empty. Um, this may be confusing to you, but it's just a common um, data uh, term. It's a, it's a data concept, I guess. Blank means absolutely nothing. And even a space counts as something. <laughs> so now what we want to do is filter and only see the zeros. Now this is all of the blank rows, the ones that are entirely blank. Now you can just select this entire, this entire column. So I would use control shift down and that selects everything here. And then do what we did before, which is right click, delete entire sheet rows. And then remove the filter and everything else is included. Even these extra blanks are included. Um, the only ones that were deleted were the ones that were entirely blank. Then we can just delete this and we're back to where we started. The last method that I'll discuss is probably my favorite because it uses Power Query. Power Query is a tool that's been around for a while, so there's a really good chance that you have it in your Excel version, even if you don't have Microsoft 365. You can find it in the data tab and it's called get and transform data. I don't know why it's not just called power query here. It's kind of frustrating, but basically we're going to be setting up a script that will transform this table into another table, except for without the blank rows. This is best for if you need a repeatable process. If this happens all the time, you get the exact same data set or the exact same structured data set every time. And there's always blank rows. You can set this up once and then never have to worry about it again. So we're going to click on this get get and transform data from table slash range, and then it opens up the Power Query editor. And as you can see, it's pulled that entire table into this editor and we can do things. We can perform actions to this table using a menu. It's kind of it's kind of cool. It's it's a menu driven interface. So you can just kind of click around and see see all the things that you can do. This is my number one tool for data cleaning. It's it's very, very powerful. So the one that we're going to the button that we're going to press today is in this remove rows. And as you can see, you can remove duplicates, you can remove um, alternate rows. But here we're going to remove blank rows remove all blank rows from this table. And when it says blank rows, it means entirely blank rows. So it will leave blanks in here. Um, it's just removing the ones that are completely blank. And that's basically it. The cool thing about Power Query is that you can keep adding steps. Like if you wanted to, um, 
if you wanted to transform this number, if you wanted to split out text, um, there's just, there's so many things that you can do. You can replace values if there's any, uh, like let's say we have um, this elementary school is abbreviated, you could replace the values uh, with the full word elementary. So it's just super powerful for data cleaning. And then next, the last step that we have to do is close and load. And we'll click here, close and load to. So this saves your query and then puts the table wherever you want. I'm gonna say existing worksheet so we can just stick it right next to the source table and then click okay. And as you can see, it's uh, added a new query here. And this is the result. This is the table, the same exact data, except now it has the blank rows removed. Now here you can see this is the query that I just created. And if you, if you need to change this data in any way, let's say you get like a fresh, um, a fresh or updated file, you could just paste it right over this and then go up to the data tab and click, oh, let me just make a change so you can see. So I'm just gonna remove the school ID and then we will refresh. Let me see if I can move over. Yeah, okay. So I will refresh and then as you can see, this table was updated completely dynamically. All I had to do was click refresh and all the changes from this table went through the same script that we wrote. It was, it's the query. So it did the same thing that we just did, which was remove those blank rows and then output it to this new table. And that's the power of Power Query. Let me know in the comments which method works best for you. If this is your first time using Power Query, I would love to hear about it.